Hello, and welcome to Maybe I Can, exploring possibilities one sprinkle at a time. If you've ever found yourself asking, is this all there is to life? Then you're in the right place. I'm Debbie, author, speaker, entrepreneur, and coach. And every Tuesday, I'm here to share a sprinkle of hope and inspiration. Together, we'll uncover the more. More joy, more fulfillment, more prosperity, more fun. We'll share stories of transformation, actionable tips, and that little nudge you need to take the next step. So let's embark on this journey of discovery and say, maybe I can, to a life filled with more. Ready to find out? Let's get started. The Maybe I Can Show starts now. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Maybe I Can podcast. I'm your host, Debbie Weiss, and I'm so happy that you're joining me today. I'm very excited about our topic today because for me, this topic has been pivotal in my life and my journey, and I hope that it'll be the same for you. Today, we're going to talk about a sprinkle of responsibility. And it doesn't sound very sexy or exciting or anything that anybody really wants to think about. Responsibility seems like a burden. But actually, hopefully, I'm going to flip that mindset if that's the way you think about responsibility, because that's certainly the way that I used to think about that word as well. But now it's empowering. So let me give you a little bit of a backstory. And I apologize if you've heard it already, but this is, you know, my life story in, well, I'd like to say 30 seconds, but I know myself and I'm a lot more long winded than that, but I'll try and keep it under five minutes. So for the majority of my life, as I faced one hardship after another, as many of us do, because that is what life is. I felt like um, as they started to pile up when I was an adult, you know, I was a caregiver to my dad for 30 years. My son was diagnosed on the autistic spectrum. My husband had mental health and physical health challenges. I had infertility struggles. I had money struggles. I had I mean, you know, you name it, it it was there. And I was so busy looking outward at everybody else and my friends and family and acquaintances. And, you know, as I got older, people on social media, and I would think, man, you know, their lives just seem so much easier than mine. If I'm keeping score, which I shouldn't have been keeping score, felt like I had a lot more troubles, difficulties, hardships, whatever whatever you want to call them, compared to other people. And I would think to myself, why? Why me? I mean, I feel like I'm a good person. Sure, I have things that I do wrong or I regret, but for the most part, I have a good heart and... Uh, you know, what What did I do to deserve this? And at a certain point, I just kind of gave up. You know, this is, for whatever reason, this is my life's journey. These are the circumstances. This is just the way it is. There's nothing I can do to change that. And this is it. This is my life. And... What's done is done. What will happen will happen and nothing I can do about it. I was kind of, you know, I visualize being in a rowboat out in the middle of the ocean, just letting the waves carry me wherever they decide to go. I don't have any paddles. I don't have any direction. Life's waves are just taking me wherever they feel, you know. I should go. And I have no control. Well, when I read 
Jack Canfield, you know, Jack Canfield, who's the co-author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. He's also written and co-authored other books, including a book called The Success Principles. And something in The Success Principles that really resonated with me was a formula that he talked about. And maybe it resonated with me more so than you know, when I'm going to explain it to you, it, it makes, well, to me now it makes perfect sense, but having an analytical mind, I think formulas were very helpful for me. So here it is. The formula is E plus R equals O. E stands for event, R stands for response, and O equals outcome. So the event plus your response equals the outcome. Well, I had been living my life not knowing that there was an R. I thought it was just E equals O. In other words, E, the event, life circumstance, your hardship, you know, your trauma, whatever that is, it happened to me, hence the outcome. Um, uh, I don't know, let's just say, you know, I was abused. And so because of that, the outcome means that I am destined not to have a loving relationship in my life. I don't know if that's, you know, luckily I am have not been a victim of abuse, but I would just imagine, and from what I've heard, that that could be a common thought or feeling or, or theme. And so if you believe it, that's, that's it. That's going to be your outcome. But there's an R in there, right? There's an R because it's how you respond to that E, how you respond to that event. And, you know, using that abuse scenario actually makes me think about Oprah. I think most of us know her story. You know, she grew up very poor um, with different family members. She did suffer from abuse and she excelled in school. She went to college became a broadcaster. She got fired from her job where she met Gail and she did not let that deter her. She did not let the abuse deter her, her um, poor circumstances, her family, familial circumstances. And then when she got fired, she didn't let that deter her, right? She, her response to all those things was basically, okay, life, you want to let me down? Here's what I'm going to do. Here's, I, and I don't want to say she's saying I'm going to show you, but she, she used her own strength to overcome. And I, I don't have names. I don't have anything, but I think that we all know that there are other people out there, given those same circumstances, did not do that. They allowed those circumstances to weigh them down, to make them feel like they didn't have a chance. They believed they didn't have a chance. They weren't good enough. They There was no way. They were too poor. They, they had, there was no way out. And so, that was it. They allowed that event to determine the outcome of their life or the path of their life. And, and that's, you know, kind of in a way what I had been doing as well. When you realize that that's not the case, you know, if you don't like the O, if you don't like the outcome, you might not be able to change the event, right? I mean, so many things that happen are out of our control. But if you don't like the outcome, 
then you change your response. You can change your response. And that is what is so empowering is, oh my goodness, you mean I have something to do with the outcome? Yes, regardless of the event, regardless of the circumstances, you can do something to change the outcome if you're not happy. And that is incredibly empowering. If we look back on the decisions that we've made or I, or the decisions meaning to either think of something a certain way or respond a certain way, and we see that we're not happy with the outcome, imagine if you had made a different decision, if you had chosen a different response. How would things have turned out? You know, on average, we have 35,000 choices in a day. 35,000 choices. That is crazy. Each day we're making 35,000 different decisions, many of them in response to an event that is steering that course of our lives. Those decisions are the oars. Those are the paddles that are going to steer us in the direction that we want to go in, not the direction that the waves just have decided to take us, that that wave of life is taking us. We can do that and we can change. We can change our outlook. We can change our decisions anytime we want. So let me just give you some examples of two different outcomes based on people with two different mindsets. The first is you lost your job. Now, you lost your job, the company is downsizing. If you're a person who, and I'm not saying that, oh, you lose your job and you're jumping up and down for joy. No, after you, you know, uh, try on the news for a little bit and sit with it, you see it as an opportunity to explore something new. Maybe you're going to start a new business. Maybe you want to start a whole new career. Maybe, you know, if you really think about it, you were kind of sitting there in the comfort zone of your job. And it's an exciting time because this gives you the opportunity to discover new things about yourself. Maybe it's learn a new skill, uh, something maybe that it's time to find something that you're more passionate about. And because of that response, it the outcome is either a new fulfilling job, a new business, more satisfaction, possibly greater career growth. That's person number one. If person number two is just consumed by fear and uncertainty and they just get kind of sucked into that spiral and they start blaming everybody and everything. I can't get a job because of my age. This economy sucks. There's no opportunities here. You know what? It's kind of like uh, you're, you're manifesting your future right there. You'll struggle to find a new job or something that you're happy with. And look, I'm not saying that, you know, a, a good job might not fall into your lap. Uh, anything is possible, but chances are that with that attitude, that mindset, one, you're going to be a heck of a lot unhappier, and two, you're going to be sucked into this cycle of feeling rejected and having a lot of self-doubt, and you could face more financial and emotional hardships than person number one. Same circumstance, different response. Same thing if it was something with your health, right? You get uh, diagnosed with a, a chronic condition, not something that is um, terminal, but something that's manageable. And one person could choose to 
um, want to learn everything that there is about this condition and do all the research and figure out what they have to do in order to improve their lifestyle and I mean, improve their lifestyle in order to improve their outcome or their overall health. And when they do that, hopefully they stand a, a much better chance of managing their condition, maybe using it to advocate others, you know, let people know and bring awareness to the condition and, and support others. On the flip side, You've got the person who just is angry, overwhelmed, feels helpless, forget it. It's not, no sense in me um, doing this. This just basically sucks. Um, my husband was like that. Now, he did suffer some from depression and anxiety, so I cannot say how much of that led into that. But, you know, I, I just remember when he was diagnosed with uh, diabetes, you know, he, he loved food <laughs> and I can't blame him. He loved food and it was almost easier for him to ignore the diagnosis, to not pay attention, kind of stick his head in the sand and he would do that until a crisis arose and he felt so terrible and his numbers, his sugar was just off, off the charts um, when that kind of crisis would kind of reel him back in. But he was bitter about it, you know, and, and then I have friends who suffer from the same condition and have a very different outlook and they have had a very different outcome. So to each his own, but neither of them possibly could have done anything to change their diabetes diagnosis. Now that's one that maybe you could have, but just let's assume that it was hereditary or genetic and there was nothing they could do, but each of them had a, a very different outcome. You can apply this to even regular decisions in your day-to-day -day life. I mean, think about you have a tight deadline at work and an unexpected problem arises and you react with frustration and you complain about maybe your coworkers or your boss or supply chain issues or whatever it is that's causing the problem. And the outcome is you're stressed. If you're blaming people, it could be conflict. And who knows? Who knows? I guess there's probably more chance that you'd miss the deadline because you were spending so much time just complaining and blaming instead of doing something about it. Where instead, if you just take a break to gather your thoughts and then systematically figure out your plan of attack, right? Whether it's breaking it down into manageable tasks, going and asking for help or for guidance, whatever it is, chances are you're gonna meet the deadline, you're gonna do it in a lot calmer fashion and reduce your stress. A couple of you know pretty common ones are, you know, when it comes to your finances, you go on a spending spree, you see something, you know, you're impulsive and you give in to that short term gratification versus, you know, um, delayed gratification. And, and because of that, you deal with financial stress versus, you know, um, allocating a portion to your savings or your spending and, and spending responsibly, you know. I've told this story many times, but money to me has always been um, a source of stress. It's been a source of stress uh, mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons, but for a very long time, I was not taking responsibility when it came to my money. I was blaming. I was blaming 
circumstances, right? I This was it. There was no response. I was blaming circumstances. All of these things happened. I We bought our house and then all of a sudden my income dropped by like 25%. Who would have ever known that that was going to happen based on the circumstances prior to me buying my house, it would have seemed next to impossible, but you know, the impossible sometimes happens. And then I had to pay for therapy for my son. There was nothing covered. I had to pay for infertility. It, I mean, it wound up to be tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars of money that I, I never expected to spend. And in the meantime, I didn't make many changes to my regular spending. And as time went on and my situation got worse and my debt racked up, I my husband didn't really know about it because I was the one handling the money. He knew because every once in a while I just couldn't take it anymore and I'd make a comment. And then whenever I did, he would get so anxious and depressed and wouldn't speak and be himself for a week or so. I couldn't stand it. And so what I decided was, I'll just stick my head in the sand. I'll ignore that I'm having this problem. I will not say anything to him because I don't want to deal with the, his stress and anxiety. And I just went on that way for years and years and years. And as each bill uh, came in the mail and uh, the balances were rising and, and taxes that I had to pay that I couldn't pay. I, I don't even, I don't even know. I wish I could, maybe I don't wish I could measure what all years and years, probably 20 years of stress, not being able to share it with anyone. I don't know what it did to me, to my health. And the whole time I was blaming, it was like, well, what could I do? I, you know, I, I could tell you the story. I, I had the story in my head that I was telling myself that I had no choice here. It was just what had happened to me. And that was that. Now, instead, if I could go back and do it all again and really take responsibility from the beginning with the decisions that I made, every decision that I made in that 35,000 decisions that I was making in a day, I don't even know how many of them would have affected you know, my finances, but I'm sure a good number of them would have. And, you know, when talking about this, boy, it's easy. It's so easy to blame ourselves. It would be so easy for me to go back and blame myself and berate myself. I, and I did that. I did that. I can't believe you let this go so long. You've got out of control. What's wrong with you if you had only taken responsibility early on? What good is that? It's no good. The only good that comes from it is if I use this moving forward. If I use this new knowledge that I am responsible for my life, I can control my future by the decisions that I'm making today, by the responsibility that I'm taking for my actions and my decisions today. Whatever is past is past. Some decisions were good. Some decisions weren't. That's okay. But moving forward, I and you are going to start taking responsibility. And taking responsibility really means stop blaming. Stop blaming everyone and everything that has happened to you. Because whatever it is, this is not oh, let's see, oh, your stuff is worse than my stuff is worse. None of that matters. None of it matters. We all have stuff. But each of us decides how we're going to deal with that stuff and the way 
that we do, the responsibility that we take for our decisions and our actions affects our lives. It controls our lives. And once you know that, you can use it to change your life. And that's why when I learned E plus O, R equals O, it was one of the most pivotal moments of my life. You know, in the moment when it happens, when some of these things happen, it's easy to make a quick decision or blame, think you have no choice. But moving forward, I want you to take a breath. Even if you make a decision or have a certain outlook or say something that you later regret, you know what, if you can't even do it in the moment, how about at the end of the day reflecting? How about when something hits you instead of just, and and this is, this is a tough one for me, instead of just, I don't want to say lashing out, but lashing out or, or making a decision that in that moment of crisis, that might not be the best. Take a pause, take a breath, take a walk, go exercise, meditate, whatever it is, lock yourself in the bathroom and read a magazine for five minutes. Whatever it takes, do it. And like I said, if you're not happy, you are, if you're not happy with the outcome, you always have the opportunity. If you can't change that particular outcome, you can always change what happens going forward. So I would love if you would take some time this week, write down a decision that you made and the outcome, maybe an outcome that you're not happy with and how a different response might have altered that outcome. Another thing, another little piece of homework, start to compile a list of small little changes that you can start implementing right now and make a note of how that would actually impact your future. Small little things, small little things. What did you eat today, right? I just ate, okay, I ate two Oreo Thin Mints. It was only two. It's fine. If I ate the whole bag, not so good. I can always change that decision moving forward. Download, you go to debbierweiss.com forward slash kickstart. And that is one critical step that you need to take in order to kickstart change. And after this episode, it might not be a secret anymore, what I believe the one critical step you need to kickstart change is. That's it. It's E plus R equals O, taking responsibility. Download that freebie. It'll give you more examples, more homework exercises to really get you in that mindset and embrace this formula. Thanks so much for listening, and I can't wait to see you next week. Thanks for spending part of your day with me here on Maybe I Can, exploring possibilities one sprinkle at a time. It's been great having you, and I hope you're leaving with a spark to light up your journey to more. Remember, every big change starts with a single maybe. If you're ready to kickstart that change but not sure where to begin, I've got just the thing for you. Head over to download my free guide, The One Critical Step to Kickstart Change, and take that all-important first step. Let's make those maybes into reality one sprinkle at a time. Catch you next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific with more stories, tips, and that extra push you might need. I'm Debbie saying goodbye for now, but always remember, maybe, just maybe, you can.